If you could change any choices you have ever made, would you? You can always make another choice and change the course of your success. Everyone has the potency to make inspired choices. Get ready to listen, share, and experience the creativity that is you. Now, here is the host of Inspired Choices Radio Show, Christine McIver. Hello, my friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Inspired Choices Show. I am your host, Christine McIver, and I'm really super grateful that you are here. It is uh, a love of mine to share knowledge that I've acquired over the years and through my personal experiences as well. If you are joining me for the very first time, I want to tell you a little bit about myself, and then we're going to jump into today's show. Now, just so you know, today's show is Courageous Conversations About Money. It's all about money, honey. So we're going to talk deeply about that, and we're going to really start to unpack how you can have courageous conversations. So I am a strategic business coach. I am also a trained life coach. I work in all areas with individuals and entrepreneurs and organizations. My favorite is to work with people who are really seeking and determined to change something in their life that's not working. Whatever it is, I love to dive in there with them and really start to challenge them and invite them into choosing something greater. So is there some area of your life where you are wishing you had more, wishing you had more satisfaction, pleasure, joy, maybe money, honey, (laughs) Um, happiness, whatever it is that you are desiring to have more of. Maybe it's knowledge, maybe it's insight, maybe there's different skills that you're looking to learn. Let's connect. Because when you are working with someone such as myself who loves what they do, the chances are you're gonna have great success. So if you'd like to connect with me, you can do so at my personal website, inspiredchoices.ca. Or you can email me, Christine, at inspiredchoices.ca. Or you can find me here on the Inspired Choices Network or on any of the social media platforms. You can just search my name and look for my face. (laughs) And uh, you will find who I am. There are many Christine McIvers out there, but there's only one. Christine McIver at InspiredChoices.ca. So let's jump into today's show. So we are talking about money, but not just about money. We're talking about courageous conversations about money. So we either love money or we hate it, right? We have this such a huge fight going on regarding money. We're either confused about it or we're possessed by it, where we can't stop thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. And you know what? As we go through all of this today, I bet you're going to find the truth of you in nearly every aspect that we're discussing. All the while, we're wanting more and not having a clue exactly how to make it happen, how to get more money. The world of money in our lives is ever present and a challenge to most to even understand. Most of us really actually don't understand money. Let's have that courageous conversation today where we're going to bring up things we don't want to admit, maybe reveal, and all the things that we avoid about money. So let's let's start to clean that up because you know what? Here's the very first thing, and I say this all of the time to my clients, to my friends, my family, This world was created, the monetary value that what the what's really valuable in this world is money. Now, on other planets, it may be animals on other planets. It may be love there. There may be lots and lots. I believe there are lots of different planets. And I do believe that they are set up differently than this one, because why create the exact same thing? Right. So. We're not talking about that today, though, but we're going to talk about money. So the world is, our world is created based on money, an exchange of value, right? But what are the, what are the, there's a couple of things that we are not taught in school. And it's interesting because these are the primary things that many coaches find themselves supporting others on. So the first thing is money, obviously. The second thing is parenting. 
we don't know about parenting. We don't get taught that in school. Maybe they're starting to change it, but most people have never been taught about parenting. And the third thing is relationships. <laughs> Those primary things in our lives, we have not been educated on, we've not been empowered with, and we actually end up really floundering in our life when we don't have education, we don't have support and knowledge in those areas. And money, when you're not have understanding money, when you don't have a good grasp on money, when you um, don't have a ton of judgments and expectations around money, or if you do, that can lead to chaos in those other areas, parenting and relationships. So while I don't believe the money is the center of everything, I believe that when we don't have a good understanding and handle on money and how we relate to it, it can impact every single solitary area of our life. So if you believe something different, I'd love to hear from you. You know, you can always join us in the chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or feel free to send me an email and tell me what you think. I love to hear what people think and I love to be challenged. So feel free. Let's talk about that. All right, let's talk about, let's go into the bit about where I talk about the, the, the meaning of words. So first of all, we're going to talk about courageous. So what's the original definition of courageous? Well, it comes from the 1300s, and its, its definition is valiant, brave, full of courage, eager, spirited, <laughs> inconsistent, following one's inner impulses. Isn't that interesting? Your innermost feelings and your temper. The thing, the one that really jumped out at me was brave. Brave. How many of us feel that when we have to have or we need to have a courageous conversation or somebody wants to have a courageous conversation with us? Now, they may not use those words, but the energy is, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. I don't want to have to talk about this, but I have to talk about this. Damn it, damn it, damn it. <laughs> the energy of needing to be brave comes up, right? That energy is like, okay, <gasps> I got to suck up all my courage to have this conversation. Well, what's the first thing that starts to happen is you start to get afraid, right? You're like, oh my gosh, I hope this goes well. I'm so nervous. And, and what ends up happening is whenever we're in those states of judgment, fear, worry, we start to close in with our awareness, we start to close in with our energies, and we start to put up walls around us. And what that does is that stop stops or locks out your awareness of what is happening with you. So how many of you have ever had one of those courageous conversations? Maybe you initiated it, or maybe somebody else initiated it with you. I can certainly remember plenty of times when I've had courageous conversations and what I've, I've had the experience of feeling very nervous when I went to have that conversation and I've had the experience of being, okay, all right, I'm going to have a courageous conversation and now I'm going to breathe and I'm just going to expand my energy out because my intention changed over time as I grew my knowledge. So I'm going to get into talking about that, but let's talk about when originally I would be very afraid or you're very afraid. What actually ends up happening is, is the other person picks up that energy, right? Just like an animal can pick up when you're afraid, so can human beings. Now, they may not have the cognitive verbal skills to say, hey, are you nervous about something? But they can absolutely pick that nervousness up. Well, then what do they do? They're like, oh, my God. Like, why is he afraid? Why is she afraid? And then they start to get afraid, right? And so what happens? Their awareness starts to shut down, right? And it becomes a chaotic, oftentimes blameful conversation, and nobody gets anywhere. So this part about courage really is an important aspect 
in whatever conversation you're going to have. And today we're talking about money. Now, the next two weeks, we're going to have more examples of courageous conversations. We're going to talk about courageous conversations with your team and courageous conversations with your clients and customers. And all of these are going to start out with the understanding about courage. So this is really, really important. So that's why I'm staying on this aspect of it, because I want to see you be successful in whatever conversations that you are having. So to have a conversation as well, what does the word, have you ever thought about what the word conversation means, right? Well, most of us will say, well, it's to converse, right? The online etymology says conversation is a place where one lives or dwells. Who knew that, right? Um, it goes on to talk about your behavior, your life, your way of life, right? It's also an informal, informal inter, inter, interchange of thoughts and sentiments by spoken words. So it's informal. How many of you, when you are going to have a conversation, first of all, you don't realize that it's the place where one lives or dwells. Well, in this world, right, the way that we communicate, um, overtly communicate is through, through words, through conversations, verbal words. Or if you do not speak, it would be through hand signals. But again, it's still through conversation, right? We don't understand enough about how we communicate energetically, which is the greater part of how we communicate. But when you think about conversation and where someone dwells, what that brought up for me, and this is the first time I'm reading this right with you guys, what that brought up for me is like, wow, I dwell in my conversation. This is where I live. This is where I identify how I communicate is how I identify who I am and what I believe. So as we look at how we identify and what we actually desire, right? We need to bring those two together and then have them on the same plane. So when you are talking about courage and conversation, right? We need to understand that we want to be brave and have some of those conversations that are not easy. But we also want to understand that where a person dwells in their thoughts and their beliefs coming through their conversation, right, is going to actually make courage or bravery challenging or easy. And so when we start to desire to have conversations about money, we need to first have that conversation with ourselves and identify, identify our thoughts and our feelings, our deep thoughts and our deep feelings, what we were taught as young children, what we've been experiencing in our lives in the last five years, in the last 10 years, dramatic events that occurred with us around money, where we avoid, where we don't avoid, what comes up for us when we're talking about money? All of those aspects need to be looked at before we start to have a courageous conversation about money. Because here's what starts to happen, my friends. If you're not having that deep conversation with yourself and you're not identifying what is truly within you and what you've been raised with and what you've believed and, and all the challenges around that, if you do not look at this before you begin to have a courageous conversation, all of your past and all of your fears and anger and worry and judgment and expectations and all of this shit is going to come sit dead center in this conversation. And all your intentions are going to be for naught because this is going to be a screaming pile of crap that's going to be unavoidable even if you don't use a lot of words your energy is going to be impacted by all of this and that's why i really want to encourage you to sit and really look at what is money mean to you we're going to get into that in just uh, uh the next segment so 
once we come back from our commercial, we're going to talk about more about how to identify all of this so that when we do have that courageous conversation about money, it goes more easily. So my friends, you're listening to Inspired Choices with your host, Christine McIver, here on the Inspired Choices Network. Stick around. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Many of us make choices in our lives based on our past experiences or what others believe. What would our lives be like if we made our choices based on what we desire for our futures? When you join Inspired Choices Radio Show with coach Christine McIver, you'll be provoked to look at what is true and what you know but may not choose that requires your attention. Christine does not hold back and brings all her expertise during each and every show. Are you ready to create the life and the living you truly desire? Listen for Inspired Choices Radio Show every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Inspired Choices Show with Coach Christine McIver. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Now, back to the program. Hey, my friends. Thank you so much for being here today. Your energy and your thoughts and your feelings are actually contributing to this show, whether you're listening live or you are listening in the replay. It's interesting how those things occur, but we're not talking about that today. We're talking about courageous conversations with money. So if you've just joined the conversation, I really would love for you to go back and listen to the first segment because that's a very important segment before we can dive into actually having a courageous conversation. And let me just be really clear. Whenever I am talking about a subject, I am not talking about it like as a surfacey, just get it done and move on. This is about changing lifetime patterns. Whenever I'm talking about a subject, I'm really inviting you in to diving deep into self-development so that you can learn something really robust that will be in your backpack that you can use going forward. I'm not about small little changes. I'm about really permanent changes so that you can have more joy and pleasure in your life. Because if you're not having joy and pleasure, what are you doing? What are you doing? We need to change that. And the subject of money often does not bring up pleasure and joy. Oh, if we have plenty of it, yes. But having conversations with people, no, it doesn't usually happen. So last week, if you joined the show, we were talking about how to develop business ideas. And it's so important to understand money when it comes to business, right? Especially when you're trying to develop something, your It's so interesting because your thoughts and your points of view about money and about what you can and can't do in business definitely come up. And so when you have a better understanding of yourself, this is really about yourself. Majority of having a courageous conversation about money is about you. And so as you get that understanding and you get strong about your beliefs about it, you know, this is going to change things for you and it's going to make business much more pleasurable. I can assure you, it really, really does. So before, um, in the first segment, we were talking about what courage meant and what conversation meant. Now we're going to talk about the definition of money. So the definition of money is funds 
which means anything that is convertible into, as well as anything that's convertible into money. Um, so money, coin, currency, change. It's interesting that the word money is also change, right? Pay attention when you're reading definitions. So I use the online etymology dictionary, which shows the original definitions of words and they are important because the energy of the original definition of those words is ever present even if it's shifted a little bit in during our time <clears throat> but the word change is with money so how much change actually occurs in your life in regards to money having it and not having it even though that when we're talking about change we're talking about coins right um it's a place for coming uh, coining money mint coined money so it goes on and talks about a lot of different things it talks about um uh put mon monies <laughs> the challenge to put one's money where one's mouth is was recorded in 1942 so it's interesting all of the angst around money uh, it's it's very very interesting when you start to really dive into it and I mean, we could talk about money and the definition of money for days and days and days. We're not going to get that deep into it. But what I really would love for you to do is I want you to ask yourself some questions. And these questions are going to lead to a lot of what moves you, propels you, and impacts you in your life in regards to money. So when you were being raised what did you learn about money? Like I'm talking before the age of, you know, 15. What did you learn about money? What did you know about money? What was the unspoken message about money in your home? What was the thing that really, that really propelled you when it came to money? So it's interesting, you know, I sat with this um, many years ago and I looked at this and I thought, okay, right, what was the message that I received about money? And I looked at both of my parents. Yes, we have my wonderful producer in the chat room is saying lack. Yeah, many of us were taught that. So I looked at <clears throat> my two, my parents and um my parents were married, you know, my whole life. And so as I was being raised, now it's important to note that I'm the ninth of 10 children. And because of that, what my parents experienced around money at different times in their life as adults, each of us children experienced something different regarding money. So it's really fascinating to sit and have that conversation with some of my siblings um, because what they experienced was vastly different from what I experienced. But as a young child, I looked at my father who would carry a wallet full of $100 bills. He always had a stack of cash and 20s and so on and 50s in his wallet all the time. He always had a lot of cash on him now i just thought it was cool like i didn't understand the reasoning initially why but we always knew dad had cash and so it in in some regards it was never an issue it was never something to be thought about um i was raised in a very small community uh we always had a lot of food we always you know had a warm bed and clean clothes and all the rest of it there was never it never felt like there was lack but yes yet there was an energy of worry which is just lack's partner right so there was my beautiful mother she worried she was a worrier she worried all the time she still does my gosh she's in the hospital and I, I, i'm going to leave and she goes no you drive safe and i'm like mom stop worrying stop worrying about me Right. That's just that's my mom's handle is she's a worrier. But growing up regarding money, I would see this my father being so robust and so 
excited about creation and about money and about what his creations were were actually gifting to to all of us and to the community and then I would feel the energy of my mom and there would be worry right and so there were times that I could see in my adult life where I would be the energy or the feelings of how my father was and then most definitely the energy and the feelings of what my mother was so I had a real confusion um, around money understandably most most of us do have a real confusion around money. So uh, let me go back. The reason my father had all that cash in his wallet was because he had his own business and he had a construction business. And the men that were in the construction business, he did fencing and guide rail on the highways in uh, um, northern Ontario. And so my father would have to drive hours and hours, you know, sometimes 20 hours to get to where the men were to give them their pays and he would have the little brown envelopes and he would put their cash in the envelopes and because we didn't have bank cards back then and you certainly weren't able to go into a bank in another area um, with just your driver's license that was not something that was done then right and it just wasn't so they needed to have cash they needed to have cash wherever they were staying in motels and food and so on and so forth so my father always had a lot of cash um, now, I didn't differentiate pay packets. Exactly. I didn't differentiate between it was our money or the, the men's money. I just knew that my dad had a lot of money, had a lot of cash. And then there was plenty of times where my father was worried about business and getting those jobs and so on and so forth. And he would, you know, head down and he'd be working and, and it'd be pretty intense. And so there was a lot of confusion around money. Now, I would sit with my mom. It was interesting. My mom was the treasurer of the Catholic Women's League. Um, and so she would bring home after a big dance or some kind of fundraising event, she would bring home the cash box. And we would, I would sit with her and she would teach me how to count money properly. Well, the first thing you had to do is you had to line up all the heads, <laughs> heads on the dollar. So I, she taught me the value to value money. That was one thing absolutely that I learned from my mother is to have honor and regard for it. But my mom was also, God bless her, she's, she was also at the effect of it because she was because of that worry energy and certainly I had that experience so so I learned to value money in a way and I learned to worry about it I learned that you can have lots of it and I also learned that there wasn't enough of it so it was this massive confusion so as growing up as an adult when there were different experiences in my life as I started to step out into the world and I would make money, you know, my first business that I was in, Alouette Cosmetics, I would make a lot of money and I thought, oh my God, this is fantastic. This is wonderful. And then I would go into a job and I would make like, I remember my first job, I made $3.25 an hour. And by the end of the week, I was like, my gosh, I, <laughs> I did all this work and that's what I'm left with. And, you know, the, it never seemed like there was enough money to last through the entire month. It was always a struggle. So I started to, you have these belief systems around you and then you start to experience life and to try to balance and understand how to work with things. I didn't have the knowledge. And because I didn't have the knowledge, just like many of us, I got myself into hot water. I got myself into hot water because I really did not sit with this and deeply understand what I felt and what I knew to be true. So fast forward to about 10 years ago when I sat down and I really consciously looked at this and I said, right, here's how dad felt. Here's how mom felt. Here's what they both experienced. Here's the struggles that they had in their life. What do I truly feel what do I know and it was so amazing to ask those questions because I got a resounding excitement energy and what I know is is that there is an endless amount of pro abundance prosperity and money in the world I know that without a shadow of a doubt I know that I know that I know that and that was a really big aha for me. So what about you? What do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt? Not 
what's in your bank account or how much money do you earn? None of that. What do you know to be true that resonates with you more than anything else? This is um, an important thing to look at because as we move into the conversation in our next segment of our of the show is we are going to be able to tap into that knowing. So what do you know? This is an important piece for you to know. And as you sit with, and I really encourage you to sit down and spend some time, maybe sit in nature, maybe sit in your favorite meditation spot, sit with a pad of paper and a pen or a pencil, maybe draw, maybe write some words, just begin to put down your thoughts in whatever way regarding your inner knowing about money and allow your knowing to show you the person that's in front of you that has fears and worries, all of that, allow your knowing that has no attachment to all of that to show you the truth of what is within you. That's where the gold lies for you and for your life. And when you allow that truth to come through, it is a gift for you and for all of those around you. And most especially when you have those courageous conversations about money. All right, my friends, we are up to our next break of the show. As usual, these shows go very quickly for me. But when we get back, we're going to dive into these courageous conversations. We're going to talk all about the conversation. All right, my friends, you're listening to Inspired Choices. I am your host, Christine McIver, here on the Inspired Choices Network. Stick around. We'll be right back. Many of us make choices in our lives based on our past experiences or what others believe. What would our lives be like if we made our choices based on what we desire for our futures? When you join Inspired Choices Radio Show with coach Christine McIver, you'll be provoked to look at what is true and what you know but may not choose that requires your attention. Christine does not hold back and brings all her expertise during each and every show. Are you ready to create the life and the living you truly desire? Listen for Inspired Choices Radio Show every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app, Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Inspired Choices Show with coach Christine McIver. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Now, back to the program. All right, my friends. Thank you so much for being here. I'm enjoying this conversation, and I certainly hope you are as well. So what we're talking about today is all about courageous conversation. And in the first two segments, I first of all, I talked about the definition of courageous conversation and money. And those are important aspects to to absolutely know. And then I talked about personal experiences. And I hope that some of what I shared really spoke to you and as well as something that is so important before you get into the conversation is really looking at what is true for you. What is true for you that you maybe don't even cognitively understand, but that is driving you regarding money. Now, regardless of where you are with your understanding or your knowing of money, does that actually match your desires about your belief systems regarding money? So for instance, if you believe that there's not enough money in the world or that lack 
is the way that you operate from. Are you comfortable with that? Do you want to stay there? Or are you really looking to change that? Would you like to actually have a different experience with yourself regarding money? You know, it's something that I most definitely um, have been looking at over the years. And one of the things that I discovered was that I believed that if if there was something that was missing in my life, if there was a lack in my life, that that I was responsible for it and that everything regarding that um, was on my shoulders. And getting an education in that area was such a gift. So I sat down with a very good friend and we had a big conversation around this. And she started to explain things that maybe seem might have seemed um, obvious to other people, but it wasn't as obvious to me. And that was because those belief systems were wrapped all around me and I couldn't see the truth about money. So we were having a conversation about credit cards and we were talking about how, you know, how they operate and how it's so difficult for anybody to get out of paying those um those credit cards once you've kind of you know been into them for a long time and there's a lot there's a high balance there is how do you get out of there and i really i didn't realize but it came through in this conversation and i could be very vulnerable with my friend is that it i had this belief system that i was responsible for every single solitary you know thing that i charged as well as all of the interest and when she started to educate me even more deeply about interest and credit card companies and how they are set up to keep you hooked in to the debt and how that propels them and their businesses and how the system is set up really working against the average person that is making, you know, anything under a hundred thousand dollars a year that, that we are really, we're hooked. We are hooked. And they, the way that they've got the system set up, that there's no, you know, easy way to get out of that system. And so as she started to discuss this with me and I started to see these belief systems that were coming up that may never come up unless you have these types of conversations, it was profound to me that I, I really felt a massive amount of guilt. I felt a massive amount of shame and guilt and shame were driving my relationship with money in all areas of my life and my business. It was like, whole, it was one of those moments. Have you ever had one of those moments where you're like, holy crap. It was a, I remember exactly where I was. We had, we went to um, New York. We were in New York. We were in our hotel rooms. We were sitting and we were chatting. And I just had this profound emotional breakthrough around this. And, oh my God, that was the beginning of shifting things for me in my world regarding money. So now when I come to have the conversation with clients, with customers, with family members, with um, team members regarding money, it's not wrapped up in shame. It's not wrapped up in embarrassment. It's not wrapped up in worries. It's actually coming forth with facts. I'm now able to have a conversation without it being layered with all of these different belief systems. So how many of you are out there trying to have conversations and you have a lot of really intense energy around money. If you have a lot of intense energy around money when you're having conversations, that is a huge sign that you have a lot of belief systems and expectations and a lot of crap wrapped up in your energy regarding money. So <laughs> I'm telling you all of this because I want you to have a great conversation. So here's one of the first things that you want to do once you've kind of cleared some of this and you've gotten a better understanding around money, when you are having the conversation, the courageous conversation around money, you may have done your work. Your job is to understand that the other person may not have done their job, their work. They may not have done their personal development work around money. And so you're going to be meeting 
their belief systems when you're having these conversations. And the very first thing you want to do is you want to drop your barriers. You want to drop your judgments and allow that person to be where they are. The more space that you can have regarding money, the more understanding that you can allow that person to receive from you. And I'm not talking about buying into their lack. That's not what I'm talking about. But the more you can have space and understanding about where they're coming from, the easier the conversation is going to go for sure. So when you start to have this conversation, so let's just pretend you're, you, 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 know, you contact someone and you said, I was wondering if you and I could have a chat. Don't use the word conversation. <laughs> Absolutely do not use that word. That word will send people and it does. It sends people all of the time. I was wondering if you and I could have a chat. Do you, would you have a few minutes to have a chat? So right away, you can feel the energy of space that I'm giving that when I'm saying that. When you're typing it, you also want to give it that same energy and space, all right? Because your energy comes through no matter how you communicate. I was wondering if we could have a chat. And so when you, you connect with that person, you'd say, you know, there's been some things on my mind, and I really I wanted to have a chat with you about them and see if we can come to an understanding. And so whatever, whoever that other person is, you know, it's going to uh, dictate how you follow into the next piece of the conversation. But you want to un come with the understanding that if this person owes you money, right, or if this person's asking you for money all of the time, you first of all want to learn to come forward with your value. Do you value yourself? How do you value what you do? How do you value the, the money that you have earned and acquired? Do you value that? As you are there, and you don't even have to say words, but as you're there in that conversation, having your value ever present is going to be a gift because not only will you have more ease with the conversation, but you're going to also teach that person to equally have value for themselves. So having that courageous conversation about money can be easeful when there is at least one person that's coming forward with kindness for themselves and for the other person and being a lot of space. So, you know, having kindness and being a lot of space, while that is important, that doesn't mean that you fall on the sword regarding money, regarding um, if someone owes you money. You don't just keep, you know, allowing them to, you know, not pay you or not pay you and not pay you. So there's just some examples coming to mind of situations where, you know, I would be, I understood what it was to struggle. I've struggled in my life like most of us have with money. And I understood where they were coming from. But I wasn't doing anybody any favors if I was just letting them constantly push it off and push it off and push it off. Please keep this in mind that when you hold someone accountable to what they say they are going to do, you actually honor their deepest intentions and you honor that part of them that you know is capable of following through. So let me say that again. When you hold someone accountable, you actually honor that inner part of them that is capable of following through. You see, so many of us buy into our own lack. We buy into our own victim energy. We can go into the victim energy so much, especially, especially when we haven't done our personal development work around money. And so you know, we've become masters at, you know, selling our poor story to other people so that other people will give us a break. Well, every time somebody's giving us a break, that's not actually assisting us into moving beyond this lack mentality or this poor me mentality. And it's critical. It's critical that we support other people. And I don't mean financially support that deep inner knowing of that person that can actually follow through on their commitments. 
when you hold someone accountable to what they say that they are going to do, they rise up. They rise up to the challenge. And as they rise up to that challenge, guess what starts to occur? They start to come out of their lack, their victim energy, and they start to move forward in the direction of their true capabilities. They start to seriously dig deep and come out of this insanity of lack. There is no lack in the world. There is an endless amount of prosperity. There's an endless amount of money available. And I'm not going to get deep into how money is created or where money comes from or any of that. But there is a deep amount of that available, my friends. Okay. So with all of that in mind, when you are holding someone accountable to what they said they were going to do, you're actually gifting to them. Now, don't say that to their face. Don't throw it at them. Just continue to hold them accountable. And if someone is not following through, be willing to say to them, well, because you weren't able to follow through, I'm now going to need to do A or B or, or whatever the case may be, right? So in that space of perhaps you're going to put interest on it, or perhaps you're going to have to hold back services, or perhaps you're not going to be able to continue to, you know, send them products, whatever the case may be, but whatever the agreement was originally set at, you need to hold them accountable to that. That's how we create greater prosperity in the world, in the world is when we hold someone to their word and we invite them into really being what they can be in the world. So we are going to go for our last break of the show. You are listening to Christine McIver here on the Inspired Choices show on the Inspired Choices Network. And we'll be back right after this break. Many of us make choices in our lives based on our past experiences or what others believe. What would our lives be like if we made our choices based on what we desire for our futures? When you join Inspired Choices Radio Show with coach Christine McIver, you'll be provoked to look at what is true and what you know but may not choose that requires your attention. Christine does not hold back and brings all her expertise during each and every show. Are you ready to create the life and the living you truly desire? Listen for Inspired Choices Radio Show every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Inspired Choices Show with coach Christine McIver. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my friends. Ah, the shows always go so quickly to me, and I feel like there's so much more to talk about. Now, if you're listening and you would like to learn more about how you can actually move through any of the topics that I'm talking about, if you're looking for some support, I would love to hear from you. I'd love to be able to support you. And it actually is one of my favorite things is to work with clients to really assist them in moving forward. It brings me so much joy to support 
and to show you that it doesn't have to be really super difficult. So today we're talking about courageous conversations about money. Next week, we're going to be talking about courageous conversations with clients and customers. So it's going to be a, a continuous evolution of today's conversation. So let's go over what we were talking about through the show. So first and foremost, we have to understand the original definitions, right? of courageous, of conversation, and of money, and what we believe all of that means, and, and we get the uh, original definition of that, that assists us in then looking at personally where we are at with all of this. Then we started to get into um, really coming to grips with what we learned we as we were growing up, what our belief systems are, and what where we would desire to be with the understanding of money and even my friends diving into educating around how money systems really work how credit card systems really work and how governments and and all of these things how everything operates around money really starts to assist you in taking a deeper understanding around your relationship with money as you become more comfortable with that understanding and you become even more comfortable with choosing consciously what you would desire to have be real for you in your belief systems, you start to contribute to the world in a whole new way. And the people around you, the people that you're interacting with, your family members, your children, your customers, your clients, any of your team members, as you have a greater ease, more easeful understanding of money, and you start to operate in a more pleasurable way with money, you're going to start to emanate that out to them. And they're going to start to be able to pick that up and also get clear around money. Money is one of the most confusing uh, topics that we have in the world. And yet, it's the, one of the foundational pieces in our world. So we owe it to ourselves and we owe it to the people around us to understand ourselves in regard to money and what is really true about money and where we've been buying false things. <laughs> like there is no lack in the world. And I will say that over and over and over and over again. And I will show people again and again and again that there is no lack in the world. The only lack is usually between <laughs> these two ears on your head. That's where the lack lies in the belief systems. There is no lack in the world. And when you are able to come to a conversation with a greater understanding, that conversation is going to be more easeful. Then we went into talking about having those conversations, having that conversation from the energy of kindness and your expanded understanding that there is no lack in the world. When you're having those conversations with other people, especially if somebody owes you money, you're going to be able to empower yourself and empower others. You see, nobody is a victim and nobody is lacking anything. It's how they're choosing to connect with or not to connect with. You see, you're, the greatest stop to money is you and, and it is for everyone else as well. So when you're coming to a conversation with love and kindness and that strong knowledge, you're going to create a different conversation and you're going to empower someone. You know, I've had my kids borrow money from me and and I hold them accountable. I don't just let them slide on them paying me the money that they owe me. Why am I doing that? Because I want them to feel empowered that they have a stronger handle on money than they maybe realized at the time. And so what I'm doing is I'm empowering them. When I hold them accountable to their word, I'm empowering them. Would you be willing to hold yourself accountable to your word? Would you be willing to turn up your capacity and your understanding and your deep knowing about money? Would you be willing to do some more deep diving around money so that you can not only have more of it, but create a greater world where everyone has more of it and has a pleasurable experience with it? Because, you know, you can get money. You can get money lots and lots and lots of different ways. You can get money. Doesn't mean it's going to be pleasurable getting it or even having it. What about if we actually had it come to us with pleasure and with joy? Wouldn't that be fantastic? 
and everyone I do believe can and will at some point have that experience. The when, that's up to us. Maybe this lifetime, maybe the next. All right, my friends, next week, be sure to connect with us. We're going to be talking about courageous conversations with clients and customers. I would love to hear from you. I would love for you to reach out, Christine, at inspiredchoices.ca, where we can have a conversation of what works for you and where you would maybe like to move forward in your life. Until next week, my friends, remember that you can always make another choice. We'll see you then. Bye for now. Aha. Thank you for choosing to listen to Inspired Choices Radio Show. Christine McIver will return next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, be willing to choose what you really desire. This is your life. Making the choices that bring you all that you desire. Bye for now.